Hey guys, this is Pierre Bones 88 and the batman -a thon continues. So today I will be reviewing, or should I say re-reviewing, it's the 1992 classic, <laughs> Batman Returns. So Tim Burton returned to direct this second film, but at first Tim Burton didn't really want to direct this film, so he didn't want to return at all. But Warner Brothers Company talked to him and saying, what if it was just a Tim Burton movie instead of another Batman film? In which Tim Burton had the idea, so he had free time to make his own Batman ideas, make it more darker, make it more gruesome. And that point on, there were some major mixture reviews of it. And... Hello, Bones. Who said that? It's me. Me who? It's the Alakabudud Balula Bududarabuta. Who? Look above your nose. What the fuck? Hey, 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 relax. I'm just a hologram. Dark Shadow? Hey. What are you doing here, and what do you want? Well, uh, I was just wondering if you got my package from the mail. Package? I didn't get no package today. I shipped it like two days ago. You should be getting your package by now. If I had a package, I would have heard the doorbell ring by now. And what do you call that then? Don't go anywhere. Well, folks, I guess I did got a package from him. What did I tell you? Yeah, thanks for telling me that. How come you didn't wrap it? Um, I guess I didn't have any gift wraps around in my piece. Of course. Figures much. So, are you going to open it? I think I'd rather wait till Christmas. No, open it now. I know you want to wait till Christmas. But I want to see you to open the package. Please, please. All right, fine. I'll open it. Jeez. Hey. Well, you know. Got myself a Ultimate Batman collection. Except some VHS. That you want a VHS of Batman, I decide to, you know what? Maybe give it to you as a Christmas gift. And it goes up to. up to Batman Forever. Oh, I like it. Thanks. I thought so. <laughs> Good Christmas gift. Now, where was I? Oh, yes! The returning star, Michael Keaton, wearing the cape and cowl to be as none other than the Dark Knight himself, Batman. Michael Guff returned to play as Alfred, and you'll see him much more in action. And the stars in this film were Danny Tevito, playing as Oswald Cobblepot, also known as the Penguin. Michelle Pfeiffer, playing as Selina Kyle, and the sexy feline Catwoman. And Christopher Walken, playing as Max Shrek. I kind of find the character Max Trent a bit of a waste because he wasn't really part of the DC Batman universe. He wasn't in the comics. He wasn't in the anime series of Batman. And he wasn't really in the Arkham games. So kind of thinking of it, I would have wished they just left him out of it because that's too many characters to concentrate. The only main villains that well, Batman shouldn't have concentrated and faced off were the Penguin and Catwoman. Two is enough. But three? That's overdoing it. 
Batman Return has some major mixture reviews and especially for parents and children were really complaining about it because it was too dark and, and really too violent. But to me, Batman Returns, I love it and even though I do love dark and creepy and violent movies, don't get me wrong, I mean it is my opinion, but honestly Batman Return is a good film, just not as better than the first Batman movie. In the box office, it hit up to about 266 Point eight million at the worldwide. So it made good money, just didn't do too much money. But unfortunately, Batman Returns is a up and down, dark, weird, ominous movie. I honestly love it. Don't get me wrong. Well, honestly, I wish Tim Burton could have done better or choose another director for the second Batman film. Do you have an opinion? No, not really. All right then, shut up. It's like somebody's got to chill to the bones. So the movie begins, Oswald being thrown into the sewers by the Cobblepot families. And 33 years later, he is now a crime boss and leader of the Red Triangle Gang circus. And speaking of the Red Triangle Gang, they start terrorizing Gotham. But yet again, Batman comes and saves the day and defeats some of the Red Triangle Gang. And by there, Penguin just uh, kidnaps Max Shrek, blackmails him to uh, become a heroic and wants to go up and to find his parents. But by there, Max and Penguin like made a deal to each other. Wait a sec. Max Shrek made a deal with Penguin? Yes, they made a deal. Figures. Are you going to be a hologram throughout this whole review? Originally, I wasn't, but you know what? I'm enjoying this hologram so much, it's not giving a virtual world. Hey, look at me. I'm a goose. I'm a goose of your world. <laughs> Unbelievable. I kind of like, I kind of liked him better when he was down at his base, but now he's here as a hologram in my room. It's just... Awkward. Now meanwhile, Max's secretary, Selena Kyle, were looking, was looking for some files of Bruce Wayne. And by there, Max Shrek just uh, pushes her out of the window. But yet she survives by the alley of cats and she came back to life. But comes back as a psychotic, vengeful, anti-hero. But mainly a thief. And then the next day, one of the acrobatic clowns just uh, kidnaps the baby and brings him down to the sewer, in which Penguin just uh, brings the baby back up, saving baby, and to make him become a heroic Penguin. So the people of Gotham trusted him and believed in him, so they were playing as suckers. Well, saps. And by there, Max Shred has an, a terrific idea to make Penguin not just a hero, but as mayor of Gotham City. So in which at first, the Penguin kind of refused to, to be mayor. He didn't want to be involved with politicians. But then he had second thought, deciding, all right, he could be mayor. And then by that night, the Red Triangle game once again terrorizing Gotham, and Batman was kicking their asses, and then he runs into the Penguin and Catwoman. So the Penguin got away, and then he fights off with Catwoman. This was a practically a awkward fight between Batman and Catwoman because somehow they kind of have a love and hate interest. Kind of reminds me of another superhero and a cat thief burglar, Spider-Man Black Cat. Little similarity. Then meanwhile, Catwoman meets up with Penguin at his lair and by there she had an idea, a plan of how to frame Batman. But Penguin had the other idea, was to disassemble his Batmobile and turn it into an H-bomb on wheels. Now, the question that everyone's been saying, and this scene really made no sense, was how did the Penguin and his gang manage to get their hands on the blueprints of the Batmobile? That didn't make no sense. Maybe one of the gang snuck into his cave and then took the blueprints. How? Uh, I don't know. They just went in there. Go in there? You 
realize they have security at the back cave. They can definitely tell that there will be an intruder going into the back cave. Okay, probably not in there, but you get the point, Bones. So during that night, the Penguin goes and kidnaps the Ice Princess. And during the same night, Bruce Wayne and Selina had their own date night for themselves. Only to make it short because they saw the news that Batman killed the Ice Princess. So that's what they thought. So unfortunately, Bruce Wayne goes into action. And same with Selina and Kyle. So Batman tries to save the Ice Princess. But he fails to attempt it because the Penguin threw the umbrella that's full of bats and that forced her to fall off the building in which the people of Gotham thought that Batman pushed the Ice Princess. So, Batman is now a cold-blooded killer? Ha! <laughs> Yay for him! Dude, he was framed. Oh. Well, you say he's a hero, but to me, I see him as a bad guy. You know, I would love to shoot you, but you're a hologram. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because you don't want to have a hole in your closet. But I dare you. I double dog dare ya. <laughs> the visual effects and the makeups were very amazing. Especially for a penguin's makeup that he was definitely not Danny DeVito anymore. He was the actual penguin with the long pointy nose and these griddle fangs of his. That made him look the actual and good penguin. And seeing Michelle Pfeiffer wearing the Catwoman's leathers costume suit look all slick and sexy. I fell in love with her. And honestly, just seeing her in that tight leather suit really made me feel totally in love with her. And for Batman being upgraded to a new suit, battle armor suit, that looked kind of great and fantastic. And I mean, I love the first suit in the first Batman movie, but then again, the second suit really actually looks him a lot better, more upgraded. And the fighting sequences, they were not too bad. They were kind of good, but fortunately they weren't too brutal like the first film. I mean, the first film, it was really brutal and they really kicked ass a lot. I think the only two best fighting scenes were Batman facing off the Red Triangle Gang and Batman facing off the Catwoman on top of the building. That was only it. And as for the Batmobile, <laughs> Batmobile has some good trick gadgets on them, including where the Batmobile just uh, turned into a, a bat pod and just like goes right through between those little, little slick crack of the building. I thought that was pretty intense. Now there are some negatives about this film that I would love to talk about. Another thing that I didn't really like was Batman just revealing to Selina the only laziness, editing, and illusions. In one scene, the black paint of his eyes, they were right there, but then the next scene, they just quickly disappear. So that was kind of laziness of editing, and what Tim Burton should have done, filmed him in the back, just like started taking off his mask, and by there he could have just revealed Bruce Wayne as Batman. Another ridiculous scene, that I just find it hilarious, but ridiculous, was the Batmobile just turning into a, a turning table bag and just flamethrowers the devil guy, bursting him into flames. I find that kind of hilarious, but ridiculous. But either way, Batman never really kills anyone. He just either unconscious them or just knocks him out. And that goes in with the big strong guy. He put the dynamite right at him and punches him right into the sewer and then he blows up. Kind of thing of it, he just kind of committed suicide. Just like what Penguin, when he was getting attacked by a swarm of bats, he did kind of commit a suicide, but when he came back from the water of the sewer, he started bleeding black. I mean, I didn't really get that either. Was he really bleeding black or bleeding red? I didn't really get it, so kind of ruined the illusions too. But it was really dark and gory, and Penguin was really scary, like he was a, a zombie penguin. Danny Elfman did return to um, compose the second Batman film. It didn't really have the energy or the marching, what they did to the first film. 
It was kind of a, a circus gothic music, most likely, but it was kind of a memorable and I did like it, but wish they couldn't just use the old theme from the first film. But now, honestly, Batman Returns is a enjoyable movie. So Batman Returns is actually a superhero movie slash Christmas movie slash Batman movie slash Tim Burton movie. All four of those combining into one movie. The kind of thing of it, it was... It was a little mess, but I love Batman because it was very dark and very and very gruesome. Is it a good movie to watch in my scene? Yes. Is it better than the other Batman films? Yes and no. Yes, because it is better than Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, but no, it's not as better than the 1989 classic Batman and the Dark Knight trilogy. But I think the both directors of Tim Burton and Christopher Nolan did a good Batman movies and they're good Batman spin-off films just to see it to believe it. And those of you who love Christopher Nolan better than Tim Burton's then okay. But if you guys are a Tim Burton fan then a Christopher Nolan fan of the Dark Knight trilogy okay then too. But Tim Burton has done a lot of good films back then such as the 1989 classic Batman, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Beetlejuice, Edward Scissorhand, Sleepy Hollow, Sweeney Todd, and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. But the one thing that I felt was really disappointed and I felt kind of a uh, sucker by it was Planet of the Apes. But either way, Batman is a memorable and an unforgettable movie. So just to rate this film for Batman Returns, I will have to give it a 8.1 out of 10 which equals to an 81%, so the grade would be a B-. minus. What do you give it? Well, for my rating, I will have to give it a 8 out of 10, so the grade would be still a B-. minus. For Tim Burton returning to direct this film, sure it might have been a mess, but still it's a good, but still it's a good Batman movie, and just to watch it and to enjoy and to just remember the good times and seeing Michael Keaton returning to play as the Dark Knight himself and with Danny DeVito and Michelle Pfeiffer playing as Penguin and Catwoman I think they were good too. Even so for Christopher Walken playing as Max Shred they couldn't just left him out of it. But like I said you could watch it on Christmas or watch it as a superhero movie and I do have this movie on Blu-ray and DVD and on VHS too. And this is PMR Bones 88 signing off. The saying is, Peace! Mistletoe can be deadly if you eat it. Mm, but a kiss can be even deadlier if you mean it. I am the ghost of Christmas future! <laughs> Knock it off! Alright, alright, alright. Yeah. Kill Joy.